Hi everyone! Happy Monday! I hope you had a great weekend and were able to get all the things done that you needed to get done this past weekend. Weekend is usually errands for me, but I didn't do errands on Saturday because I was doing other stuff. And I've taken today off! Woo! Why did I take today off? Because tomorrow's Pioneer Day. What is Pioneer Day, you ask? It's Utah's birthday party, is the quick and easy description of it. Um, we celebrate when the pioneers first arrived in the valley, up in, you know, Salt Lake Valley, and the entire state of Utah has a day off tomorrow. Well, a lot of people do. I do. We're kind of weird. I had one job where you could either choose to take um, President's Day off in um, February, or Pioneer Day in July, and almost everybody took Pioneer Day off in July. But anyway, so I have a day off tomorrow, so I took today off, so you know, four day weekend! Woot woot! Woot woot! Doing the nothing! So uh, I've been doing errands this morning, uh, laundry, uh, dishes, you know, the, the stuff that needs to be done because Mom and I went and had a little bit of an adventure on Saturday. So more about that later. Uh, shall we do the things? Let's do the things. So with our progress report, I just have the uh, last little wise guy, wise man I should say, to show you from our uh, Oh Holy Night Nativity from uh, Stony Creek. That's the publisher. And as you can see, uh, he's pretty much got all of his white uh, cloak done. I've got all the green stripes of his robe done, and I'm starting to work on the beige. I have three more beige colors to go there into his cloak. And then off over here is some more cloaks. So I'll have to move the uh, hoop to finish off the cloak. So he's almost done. Maybe by this week I'll, I'll get him done. So I'm kind of really pleased with that. I was working on him a little bit this morning, but then my uh, my head started to hurt. I had a hurt behind my eye, so I, I put it down. We went to Walmart instead and got groceries. Because that's the natural thing to do. Have a headache, let's go to Walmart. Anyway, so he is looking really 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 good if I buckle down and keep at it kind of the way I have been going this past week I should be able to finish off the last little wise man by the end of the week so kind of looking forward to that let's put him over here in the box I did do quite a bit of work well maybe not quite a bit of work but I did get some work done on um inspiration by Rosewood Manor at work but when I was leaving work on Friday and telling everybody that I wasn't going to be in on Monday I wasn't thinking that oh Monday is floss tube day we better bring inspiration home so I can show it to you so inspiration is still at work so it'll be another week before you uh, see it um, sorry but that's just the way it is it's okay you guys can see more progress in another week and it'll be just fine huh princess Speaking of of leaving stuff at work, I also left the floppy the the floppies. Oh my goodness, the flooby list at work. And there's like 12, 15 of you who are our new friends who I got to meet and watch your first video. And some of you have put out second videos by now, so that's wonderful. And next week, next week, I promise I will bring home the list of new floss tubers to share with you guys, so you can go meet these new wonderful stitchers as well. Oh yarn. I don't have a lot going on for O yarn this week. Um, mostly because I have been working like a mad fiend on the um, nativity uh, project because I want to get it done for my grandmother. She does turn 90 um, next January so uh, time may be running short and I just heard the cat knock over something in the other room. Well, I don't think I have anything out. So we'll just have to wait and see what it is. She knocked over the lamp this morning. I ne nearly killed her. Stinking cat. I'm still not a cat person. She's been with me for four years, and I'm not a cat person. Anyway, so let's 
back to what I was supposed to be talking about, which is O-Yarn. I have been working on, this is 100 Acre Wood. Um, it is a design by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And um, I, what has happened is I made a mistake down in here between about five of these little eyelet sections um, where I had knit when I was supposed to purl. So I had a garter bump between these. So I fixed those. But to fix them, I had to pull out these little eyelet things because it was hard to drop down through the eyelets to fix the garter ridge. So I pulled out five rows. So I have knit all those five rows back in with the lace and then gone up four more rows. Yeah, I think plus four more rows. So I put in eight rows the other day and it is looking just wonderful. And I can hear the cat getting into trouble. So we are going to pause a little bit while I go see what Princess is up to and get her out of trouble. Surprisingly enough, she's doing cat things. Um, she'd knocked over the uh, trash can that I have in the uh, craft room annex next door and was nuzzling her head into the plastic bag because she is a plastic bag cat. <sighs> this is where I am at this one. Um, here's the whole thing. Little hoops down to the edges and all. I put it on a pair of my Haya Haya Sharps that mom got me for my birthday. So, really quite excited about that, quite pleased. So, there you go. I'm about to a section where we start doing some... It's texture, so you do some slip, slip, slip stitches and move them around a little bit here and there um, for some texture. So, I'm looking forward to doing that mm -hmm. quite a bit. So Saturday, Mom and I got up to absolutely no good whatsoever. We went on a road trip. It was a shop hop for several uh, Utah yarn shops in the area. And so uh, week before last Saturday, we hit the two shop Heinzelmann's and Harmony that are here in Provo. Um, Heinzelmann's carries a lot of like cascade yarns in all their variety and flavors and very, very few bits of um, like a hand dyed or an indie dyer or a local dyer thing. They're primarily cascade yarns and Plymouth yarns. Um, that's what they carry. Harmony did have a little bit of Malbrego and some other stuff. Uh, I forgot exactly what they have, but their lighting in their yarn room is, is not very good, so it was hard to see the colors and things of the yarns that they have. If you have a yarn shop, make the lighting really good so we can see what you got. Um, so those we hit um, the other day didn't buy anything, uh, nothing really called our names, and so there were five, five more shops to hit um, last Saturday, yesterday, not yesterday day before yesterday was Saturday whatever you know what I mean anyway so I went over to mom's house got over there at about oh just before nine because we had talked about going up to Ogden um, to Needlepoint um, Inc. is that Needlepoint Inc. Needlepoint and anyway that's Needlepoint and something up in Ogden it's like a block over from Shepherd's Bush um, start up in Ogden and then work our way back down towards uh, the last one would, we would have visited was in Park City. But mom had other plans and shuffled it up for us and it was still a lot of fun. So, uh, so we started our trip. We left at about 9.30 and went up to Gardner Village where the uh, first shop we were visiting um, on Saturday was located and that is wo Willow and Wool, Wool and Willow. It's definitely wool, and it's definitely willow, and it's definitely in, in Gardner Village. And they had a lot of cutely little yarns. Um, they had a little bit of hedgehog. They had a little bit of uh, dragon horde yarn. She is a local dyer. Uh, they had some Wonderland wool um, that uh, they had a colorway there that really, really called to my mom's called my mom's name. It was lovely turquoise, aquity, aquity, aqua. aqua, aqua. I'm trying to make turquoise and aqua be one word so it was coming out awkwardy. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, beautiful uh, shades so mom thought about those and nobody put them down and put them on her wish list. So we stopped in there, looked around, had a good time, um, headed off to our next stop which was uh, the place in uh, Bountiful. 
um, almost woods cross, kind of on the border, uh, just off of the 23rd, 2300 North exit, which is still a Salt Lake um, address, I think. I don't know. Maybe it's 2300 South. I don't know. I just know you get up there and you get off the freeway at the Kmart, which hasn't been a Kmart in about 2015 years. So, you know, I just navigate by a landmark pretty much, even though the landmark's not there anymore. It used to be a something or another. There's trouble herself right there. Anyway, what was the name of that? I don't know the name of that place either. Do you know why I don't have the name of that place? Because we turned in our little cards. Anyway, we stopped off there, and uh, they, like Heinzelmann's, carry a lot of Cascade yarns, carry a lot of uh, Plymouth stuff, but they did have a, uh, a local cap designer, and I picked up this uh, pattern. This is called the Mountain Cowl. Kind of see right there, done in a worsted. They had this one for free, so I picked it up. I really like the looks of it. I could use one of my uh, skeins of Yauza for it. Um, I have two skeins of yaws. I could, this one only uses about 215 yards, which means my one ball of yaws would make two things. So, uh, Lisa, do you want to wear matching cowls? So, there's that. That's our first acquisition, and it cost me nothing. And then, after our stop in Bountiful, we headed all the way up to Ogden to uh, Needlepoint, Inc., and we had an adventure getting to it because it was the farmer's uh, market slash street fair um, had closed down 25th Street where um, Needlepoint, Inc. is on that street. So we, uh, it was crowded. There were tons of people all up and down the street all over the place and it was hot. But we lucked out. We found a parking spot that wasn't too, too far away from everything. We're able to walk down, um, explore the store. It's a beautiful store. They just didn't have any yarns that really spoke to my name. Um, I can't remember any of the brands. They did have a lot of indie dyers and independent yarns and, and stuff like that. Um, in addition to some stuff from Germany and some stuff from Japan. I forget everything, but um, beautiful shop. And so we, we left there and we went past Shepherd's Bush and it looked like their parking lot and area was just overflowed, overflowing and crowded from the, uh, the same uh, farmer's market festival thing that was going on, you know, a block to the south. So we skipped Shepherd's Bush. Sorry. Um, drove down to Centerville, stopped off and had delicious sandwiches at Cutler's. Yummy, yummy sandwiches. I had a lemon sugar cookie. It was so good, you guys. Absolutely delicious lemon sugar cookie. And then we headed back on down the, ro ro the, ro the road to uh, the Wool Cabin. That was our next stop. And they're kind of, they're at 33rd, 33rd South and about 200, well, 2000, you know, East. But you know how us Utahns, we, uh, 33rd South is like numbers more things. There's extra zeros on it. So we pulled in there and they're the place where I bought the uh, gradient that I'm using for my um, Curious Handmade 100 Acre Wood shawl. And so this is what's left of the gradient from light to dark, top to bottom. So beautiful, beautiful wools. But I'm really worried that I'm going to run out. Um, simply because the yardage on this is not quite what the yardage called for in the pattern is and I tend to um, be coming up short, you know, ending off with a 7 grams still on the uh, the balls by the time and I'm thinking, okay, now's a good ch good place to change colors, you know, in a place that makes sense instead of like halfway in the middle of a lace repeat or something like that. So I went in looking to buy either another a uh, big old skein of this color down here, and so we had picked some stuff up, picked up like a full skein. So I was thinking I just, you know, would have these, this uh, set of meters left that just wouldn't get used at all, and I would use that other skein. And then um, I saw this um, beautiful, oh, everybody's going timber over here. Stay still, guys. Um, beautiful, uh, um, it, it was skein, mom and I, uh, caked them up when we got home. Um, this is by Marionated Wools. It is a scrumptious HT 
Um, it's got cashmere in it. It's super soft. I really, really like it. Um, so we figured that that, we'll just hold that one up. I mean, it's not a perfect blend, but we would, I could run this for as far as I could and then just probably end up using a little bit of the uh, amethyst. This is, this is very delicious or bodacious berry. I think this is bodacious berry and this is amethyst. And then just use the amethyst a little bit at the bottom. So that's kind of the plan for there. And mom is mom is obsessed with sweaters currently. That's all she wants, all she's really thinking about working on. I've got to put these away. Otherwise, otherwise they won't be put away, quite frankly, frankly. And there's nothing terrible with that, but I do like to put them away. So anyway, we were poking around and looking at stuff. And I picked up a, a skein of, of Malabrego. This is the Whale Road um, colorway, and sorry, it's all feeling, falling apart over here on some of the outside layers because I accidentally cut, caught the outside layer with um, one of my, the edges to the paper bag when I was pull, putting it back in. But this has some lovely purples and some turquoises. There's actually uh, some spots of um, like a beautiful uh, berry red that I'm not not really seeing come through the way it got um, caked up and so this was beautiful and I bought it and mom really loved it too and so there were three of these and so I picked up one mom picked up the other two and she was looking to uh, mix it with like a navy for a sweater but I picked up this wonderful um, it's a pearl is the name of the colorway also a Malabrigo sock um, it's a soft gray with some like lavender purpley over undertones and so I think together let's put this like this together they look really quite wonderful and I am thinking about doing a two color shawl there are only 16 million different two color shawls to choose from from Ravelry so I think I will look at the uh, hundred or so I have saved in my favorites and decide which one is going to be the perfect two color shawl. I'm also thinking when I get done with hundred acre wood the amethyst does not look half bad with it. I'll make a giant stack of colors so it could even go into a three color shawl with whatever is left over once I finish the hundred acre wood shawl. And I think that's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, absolutely yummy and it's just me is it not i mean come on guys purple and more purple with a little bit of gray it's really really me so there you go that is what i bought at um the wool cabin they're a gorgeous shop uh, they just moved um, recently and so they're in a new building um, with new displays new fixtures new 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 and they're really quite quite lovely. The ladies are really friendly, want to know what you're doing. Um, I like them. I like them quite a lot. So anyway, mom decided that maybe she'll do her sweater with um, pearl, but there were only two pearls. She needed three pearls and the two well roads. So I think today she was going to start calling around and seeing if any of the other local shops has um, well road or three pearls. She has a $50 gift certificate up to uh, Blazing Needles, and so she thinks she's going to try to buy, use the $50 gift certificate first before she spends any of her own money. And I have been talking a long time. It's crystal light time. Ah, oh, delicious. Okay, so then we went up to Park City. Well, almost Park City. Kimball's Junction is um, the intersection where you can get off I-80 and turn and go up towards Park City. Oh my goodness, cat. Floss tube, itchy nose. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, to Wasatch and Wool. This is a little tiny store that is absolutely positively stuffed to the gills with yarn. I mean, it's just, it's like a treasure hunt, you guys. There's just yarn from floor to ceiling. Um, it's a small shop, but like I say, it is stuffed to the gills. Um, she has a lot of independence. She has a lot of stuff that you've heard of. Um, just 
yarn and yarn and more yarn and more yarn and lots and lots of yarn all over the place. It's yarn. So I did I did buy a couple of things. I bought, um, we'll start with um, this lovely skein. This is by The Yarn Brary. Um, this is a local dyer. She's up in Salt Lake. I watch her part podcast with her sister. Um, it is Meanwhile at the Castle, and they're a pair of lovely, lovely ladies. Um, yarn Brary. So this is 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, this is the colorway Mistress Mary, quite contrary from the Secret Garden Collection. Lightly pinky, it's a pinky purple with some speckles. Just really, really sweet. It'll be fun to pair that with a, a something. Maybe a purple, maybe an I don't know. I have lots of choices for a shawl. Maybe I'll just do a one scheme, something or another. Always a possibility. So, got that. Really, really pretty. Happy with that. And then the last uh, yarn I picked up was a Sweet Georgia. This is uh, Cash Lux, is the uh, type. And so 70% uh, superwash merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon, softer than soft. Do you see there's the golds, there's the purples, there's more purple down here on this end. A um, little bit of pink back in there. It's called, the colorway is called Smitten, but it really looks like a pansy to me with the purple and the gold. So that's really why I, I bought this. So this is destined for a one skein cowl. Um, I only have like 16 bajillion saved on Ravelry and my favorites. So I'll just, you know, flip through those and, and choose one and eventually we'll cake it up. That's why it hasn't been caked up yet because I've already got another shawl on the cakes. So there you go. That is beautiful. Um, while we were there, Mom had seen quite a while ago on Ravelry uh, a shawl that she really wanted to do. And they had the yarn that it was called for. Um, she needs seven balls of the uh, the yarn. I think it comes in 50 grams instead of 100 grams, so she needed 50 or seven of the 50 grand um, balls, and they had five um, in the stock shop. So she bought all five that they had in the shop, and it looked like they had uh, three or four more in the storage unit. And so she put her name down, and she'll probably be able to buy all of that she needs, so she can um, work on that shawl. Uh, she was saying. <laughs> the other day she was like, well, I really want to knit it. It looks really fun, but I don't really wear shawls because I don't go anywhere. And I'm like, whatever, just knit it whatever you want and I'll kidnap it and wear it because I like wearing all the knitted things. So she's excited. She gets to um, start in on that. She'll, we, uh, when we were caking up my other two, she thought about caking up her ones, but she's finishing a sweater first. So there's that. Speaking of sweaters that mom is working on, um, she's been working on a, a sweater for herself. A beautiful sweater, navy with a, a fuchsia e purple and, and a little bit of a turquoise accent. Um, she's coming right along. She has uh, the front and the back done, one sleeve's done, and I think she was finishing up on her other sleeve. But one day she came in and started to knit on it, and we'll use this um, ball as an example but you know not not really and so she started knitting away and off came like three five inches before you know, okay well so she took that off and she grabbed the next thing and started going and this one went quite a ways before it too had come off and so she sat to look at her um, ball of of yarn and was looking at it and and discovered that there were little tails coming off all over the place and she looked at it and looked at it and next to her uh, ball of yarn was her pair of scissors that she uses you know when you have to cut trim the ends and you're switching yarns and stuff and she kind of looked at it and there was only this one section where the uh, the yarn had been snipped so she's thinking that one of the darling darling grandchildren had come in, saw the scissors, a solo belt, and went snick, 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 all in just one little area of the ball, and then had gotten called away and told to, you know, hey, come on, we're doing something, and that was that. So, luckily she had plenty, plenty of this yarn, but uh, she lost nearly half of it. I mean, there were 
things from four inches to, to longer to maybe it went around a few times before it was cut. It took a while to kind of sort it out and pull off all the little pieces before she got back to her main um, ball of yarn. And then, you know, so she got that sorted and then she was knitting along on her sleeve. This is the first sleeve, the sleeve that's already done. And she looked up and there were holes in her sleeve. Snick, snick, snick. I tell you what, my mom must have the patience of a saint because she just sort of sighed and unraveled everything she had knit and uh, um, I don't know if she did a, what is it, the Russian join where you weave them together or if she just had, you know, backed it up a little bit so that she had long enough ends to weave in and she just re-knit it and I don't think she said anything to the grandchild and I don't think she said anything to the grandchild's mother so that was watch your scissors with your youngins so now mom is always sure to make always make sure that she puts the scissors up before the grands come over so i thought you might enjoy that little story of adventures in knitting and grandchildren news notes and nonsense and it's a lot of nonsense this week um, I got a new 18 inch uh, ring light, so I have been trying that out. We'll see how that looks because in my viewfinder everything looks uh, slightly overblown. I can see the reflections off my cheeks and uh, my forehead. We'll see how that goes. Maybe they'll go straight to YouTube. I'm okay with it. This is real life for me. I don't wear a foundation, so I am going to be shiny, but it's a clean shiny. Shiny and clean. Anyway, and then I have another light here to the side that I've put on to sort of counteract sunlight coming through the window, but you're never going to counteract the sun. That's a massive incandescent gas. A gigantic nuclear furnace. Um, so I'm excited for that. I got a new uh, thingy. Uh, table stand for it because my table is so far against the wall there just wasn't room to pull it forward enough to put a tripod back there for the ring light to go on so I have a table stand so table stand and ring light and there's a uh, hot hot shoe a hot foot shoe thingy hot shoe I don't know the technical terms so you can slide in another um, mount for your camera so I have another mount for my camera and my camera's on the mount so we just sort of changed all that over last week um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes when I'm doing the editing to see if it's um, a good change or what I need to do I turned up the ring light uh, pretty high today um, so I feel like I'm blinded blinded by the light right so yeah I know I turn around and I see rings bright bright rings of light anyway so there's that um, hopefully that'll improve the view and the colors and everything because I noticed over the past while with the uh, pinky purple walls it's been reflecting a little much too much pinky purple and nothing has been reading quite like I would prefer it to read and it's just been a little bit too dark and I didn't enjoy what I was seeing so much so hopefully this helps out who knows um, what other nonsense have we got on kitty what do we got going on you're right. We made it into the Arizona Stitchy Retreat. Woo! Yeah, under the line. Uh, got the email Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. I think poor McKenna was just overwhelmed, beyond overwhelmed. And so we, we made it under the 80. I was able to send in my registration fee. It's all paid for. My BFF, she made it in. So we are going to Arizona to Chandler for Stitchy Fun in April. I am so, so excited. You know, it's finally a retreat that's close enough for me to drive. Um, April is a good month for me as far as events go at work work um, we're pretty quiet um, I'm really excited you guys I'm so excited Woo! yep 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 so I get to go to retreat I'm I'm so excited um, I, it's 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 I'm trying really really hard to not make a list of every little thing I want to do to start a box where I you know oh this would be good to take to the retreat and throw it into the box oh this would be good to take to the retreat and throw it into the box the retreat is eight months away you guys eight months away and I'm already going okay I want to take my foot footrest and my this thing and the that thing and the other thing and the thing of the things 
let's take it all. So I'm trying to be good, to relax, to be chill. But I get to go to retreat! Yay! I'm so excited. I'm really, 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 really excited. So um, there's that. So um, yeah, that's that's it. That is it, it, it. Um, I know, mostly knitting today. Um, my head has ceased to hurt as much as it did, so maybe I'll work on Mr. Wiseman a little bit more. I'm really wanting to see how the uh, textured stitches are working out on my um, 100 acre wood shawl, so that's really, really tempted, tempting to get after too. Uh, so we shall see. We shall see uh, what I get up to. But anyway, Thank you everybody who has stayed with me this long, who has subscribed to the channel. If you want to be alerted for when I put a new video up, just hit the little uh, bell right there next to the subscribe button. Uh, thank you everybody for liking my videos and giving them the old thumbs up. Uh, thanks for everybody who comments. I do read them all. Uh, when I read them, you get a heart. Um, I try to answer them. I need to go through and see if there are comments I've missed. Um, anyway, so that's that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I hope you guys get plenty of time to stitch this upcoming week. It's going to be a good one. I don't have to go to work tomorrow. I'm going to stitch tomorrow. Yes, sir, I am. Um, and I hope that frog stays far, far away from your house. Oh, look. Mom brought back a new Bernina for me, so I put it together. See? New Bernina. Right there. Woot woot. I need to figure out how to get that um, working and, and running. Okay, it's not a new new Bernina. It's a new to me Bernina that's old. Does that make sense? It's like 10 years, 15 years old. I don't know. It's, it's a nice one. I need to figure out how to make it work. So there you go. What was I saying? No frogs, mini stitches, hugs and stitches everybody. Bye.